getting clients to sign on the dotted line. Oh, we started. Um, all right, yes, so I'm Jill Anderson. I design and develop custom WordPress sites for creative professionals. And I've been doing this full time for about 12 years now. Um, yeah, so this talk actually uh, came from an idea talking to Sue um, about, you know, around some processes and uh, things that I do with my clients to make sure we have a good relationship and get the project started uh, in a good way. Um, so I just want to share that experience with all of you. Uh, so yeah, so if you have a client and, or maybe they're not your client yet, but they're interested in working with you and, you know, they want to talk to you and learn more, what do you do? Uh, do you like start firing off ideas and jump into the project and think about money and time frame and all that later? Or uh, you know, do you want to step back a little and do some pre-work to make sure that everything goes smoothly? Um, and I just want to say this process I'm going to share is my way. It's not the only way and you might differ in your approach and that's perfectly fine. Uh, so. You know, just take everything I say with a grain of salt and some of it I hope will work for your business and you know, if there's other stuff, then don't worry about it. All right, so yeah, so today we're gonna talk about these four things. We're gonna talk about contracts, vetting the prospect, we're gonna talk about money, and preparing for a strong project kickoff. So the first thing is the contract and probably the most important, I think. Uh, of all of them. So is there anybody who does not use a contract right now? You know, I think something in Proposify, but I don't know if that is actually a contract of like legal. Well, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah, so I say everybody needs a contract. I think if you're gonna be successful as a business person and providing these services to your clients, you need to be on the same page with them. And that's really what a contract does. So whether it's a bunch of legalese or it's you know, written in plain English and is super simple, either way a contract saying, here's what I'm gonna do for you, here's what I can expect from you in return, will make a project much more successful. So do you need a lawyer? I don't think you necessarily need a lawyer to write out a contract, to share it with your client to have them sign it and to start the work. Um, I think it can be a good idea to have an attorney review a contract just to make sure it's on the up and up and you know everything you're doing is good and in your best interest should you need, uh, you know, should there be a dispute or a uh, problem later on that your client, your contract will hold up. So having a lawyer review it would be awesome, uh, but you don't, necessarily need a lawyer to start using contracts. And then what if they don't sign it? Um, I've never had this problem you know, in 12 years. I've never had a client say, all right, I'm ready, but your contract, no. I just, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Because if they did say that, I'd probably be like, oh, that's a giant red flag. Like, why not? Um, so I'd say if it, uh, the contract shouldn't be like a deterrent for people working with you. Uh, if anything, I think a contract should make people feel more uh, comfortable about working with you because you value yourself as you know, a business professional and you, know, you have your client's best interest in mind. So having that and showing that at the beginning of the relationship, uh, I think just can only make things better. So what to include in your contract? And then Sue, you asked about what is it, Proposify or? Proposify. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say, you know, are these things in that uh, agreement or, or contract that you're working on? So there's usually a terms and conditions section. Um, this can be a bunch of legalese. It's basically defining what you're gonna talk about in the contract. Like, you know, I'm the designer, you're the client. Uh, you might have designer tools, uh, you might have deliverables. So, you know, words that you'll see throughout the contract, uh, they'll be defined in this like terms and conditions section. Um, effective dates. 
you don't want your prices to be effective forever, right? Like if somebody comes back three years after you send them an estimate, is that, you know, estimate the cost or is that what you're supposed to charge them three years later? So you should have some language in there about you know, how long this estimate is valid for. Um, and, you know, if uh, in your effective dates, you know, this could be a section where you talk about, you know, if uh, any applicable fees, if things go on longer than they should, that kind of stuff. So also fees and charges. Um, you should define for your clients, okay, here's what I'm going to expect in terms of payment time frame. Like I usually break my projects into thirds, um, but a session this morning, like maybe I should do that like over months, like over six months or something. Um, so however you do that, you want to define that for your client so they know what to expect. And also what happens if payments are late? Are you going to charge them a late fee? You know, what does that look like? Because uh, there will be clients that will pay you late <laughs> and uh, you want to protect yourself if it's super late and you want to charge them fees for that. Uh, grant of rights, you need to say who owns what and when. I mean, for me, once I have received full payment, then they, the client has the right to use all my work and do whatever they want with it. Um, you know, different fields might do different things with how they grant rights, but uh, whatever it is. Is this where you would also mention that you would, that they would allow you to show the work you did for them on your website? That yeah. Sample? Yeah, that would be a good place to say, like, okay. hey, um, you know, so I want to include. Yeah, if you want to include that like on your portfolio or submit uh, to design awards or anything like that, um, you know, anything you're going to do, it's a, you know, it's a good place to state that somewhere in your contract. So the grant of rights would be good for that. Um, client responsibilities. So what happens if the client turns out to be awful? Um, like if they don't make timely decisions? or don't provide you the content on time, which happens all the time, it feels like. Um, you know, what if there are errors in the project that are found, you know, six months or a year later? Who's gonna be responsible for that? Well, I don't wanna be responsible for that. Um, so my contract is gonna state that, you know, upon uh, the client signing off on it and everything, that that is now back in their hands, should there be errors. Uh, confidential information, you know, of course, you wanna, be uh, up, you know, upstanding and not disclose anything you might learn during the project to other clients or industries or whatever that uh, the client wouldn't be happy about. So definitely let them know that you'll keep it all uh, in your head and nowhere else. So relationship of the parties, um, like I'm an independent contractor and there's no exclusivity. Um, you know, you're not an employee. I mean, I guess if you wanted to be, but this wouldn't be <laughs> what we would be discussing then, but, uh, um, and then, you know, you, uh, or at least I state that, uh, you know, if a uh, dog trainer hires me to do their site, then I can do uh, another site for, you know, five other dog trainers, and nobody has the right to have me not take on other work that I want to. Uh, warranties are, you know, again, in the future, what's uh, it going to be like for this project? Your know, time periods, support after the project is done, you know, for a website, of course, that might live for years after uh, it's launched, you know, what are you responsible for? So in my contract, I say, you know, if you find something within 30, or I think I do 90 days uh, of it launching, you know, a bug or something crazy, I will fix that as part of the project fee. Um, I have a maintenance plan, so I also put some language in about what that includes. Um, your like liability section, you know, again, in the future, if something happens, who's responsible, you want to not be responsible, basically. Uh, term and termination is, you know, what if the project gets canceled? What if you need to cancel the project because the client is terrible and you're just ready to be done with them? You should have some language in your contract that allows you to do so. Um, also, if the project stalls, like if your clients are not giving you what you need to finish this project, I have some language in my contract. Uh, if it's been over 90 days, I haven't heard from them, the project can go on hold and I have a restart fee. 
So it's going to cost you 500 bucks or 10% of the project fee, or whatever's greater, to uh, you know, restart it again. Mm -hmm. I have like, exactly, yeah, like $500 or 10%, I think, whatever's greater as a restart. You know, I haven't actually billed a client that, but I've referenced it before, like, you know, hey, I realize it's been a few months. We really need to get back on track here. I don't want to have to enforce this thing. And usually <laughs> the idea of having to pay more money will get people moving and hopefully get the project done. Um, and like miscellaneous stuff, uh, terms can be modified, but only in writing. Client can authorize expenses, you know, orally revisions. Any disputes must go through arbitration. That's an important part. Um, I've had clients uh, want their deposit back, and I, I've only had this happen, well, really twice, but once. Uh, where they were really nasty about it. And I thought I did a really good job on the work I'd done so far. Um, so the amount of the deposit, which in my contract I say it's non-refundable, um, kind of makes it so that if we went through arbitration, it wouldn't be in their best interest to really pursue that. Um, you know, I don't want them to take me to small claims court. Uh, so I think stating that uh, arbitration should be used uh, can be a good thing. And of course, signatures on the contract makes it all real. So, Some resources. Um, my contract is actually based off the AIGA's standard contract and has just been modified over the years. Uh, Freelancers Union has a good one, too. So those are good, uh, good places to check out. And, uh, I'll share links to these slides, too, at the end, if you don't get everything written down. Um, all right, so once you have your contract, you want people to be able to sign it online. Just make it super easy so clients don't, you know, you don't want to be faxing or anything crazy like that these days. Um, so I use HelloSign. I love HelloSign. I think it's like 13 bucks a month or something. I think it's a, a pretty affordable fee for what you get, which is really easy signing, uh, really easy. You know, I upload a PDF put my signature fields where I want, have the dates reflected where they, um, when they signed it, it updates the date for me and my signature, uh, and then keeps an archive of that for me. So I can go back and look, did this client sign their contract? Did this client sign their contract? Uh, and then I also put a link up on my website, uh, which is jillindesign.com um, slash terms, which has links to download my contract uh, PDF and then also links over to HelloSign. So you definitely want some place to sign online and links for where people can access those. So now we get into like, oh, somebody wants to work with me. OK, well, what do you do? Um, your next step is qualifying and vetting the client. Because just because someone wants to work with you doesn't mean you want to work with them. <laughs> um, You'll, I, maybe it's just sowing your oats, but you know, once you've been in business long enough, you start to realize, yeah, not everybody is a good fit. Um, and for me, having a consultation call, I call it a free chat, you know, 30 minutes, just to get ideas about the project, you know, make sure that I can communicate with this person. It just goes a long way to knowing that it's going to be a su successful project. So yeah, consultation calls. Um, you know, if you're, you can certainly meet people in person uh, if your clients are local to you. That's also an option. Uh, my clients are all over the place, so calls <coughs> are the way to go. Um, I usually do mine just as phone calls, but you know, you use Zoom chats or you know, however, video conferencing, however you want to do it. And then I use an online scheduler, uh, Calendly, to make it really easy for people to schedule calls with me. I started using this you know, like a year or two ago, and I was like, where was this thing all my life? Because it is like hands down one of the best ways to save time. Because you just, I just say, here's my Calendly link, you know, calendly.com slash Jill Anderson. And I have it, uh, I schedule my calls Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays from 10 to 2, because that's good for me. My kids aren't home. They're super loud. I don't like to be on the phone when they're around. Um, 
It's not too early in the morning. Uh, and I have it synced with my Google Calendar, so like if I make a doctor's appointment or something, it'll take that off my availability. Um, and then it's just like, hey, you, client, pick a time that works super easy for you, and where we save back and forth uh, emails and all that, trying to pick a time. And on this consultation call, you definitely need to discuss time frame, budget, and where they are in the decision-making process. So I start off each call really by saying, all right, tell me a little bit about your business and your project, and we'll see how I can help. And then I just let them talk, and I just sit back and listen. And doing active listening to really get an idea, okay, am I gonna be able to communicate with this person? Um, does this project seem like it's gonna be fun? Uh, am I the best fit for it? You know, maybe they want something that I don't do, or uh, I can't do, or I don't wanna do. Um, so really, you know, just listening to their needs. And then, you know, you start offering some solutions, but not, you know, you don't wanna do the work for them at this point at all. It's more like, yeah, I think this would be a good fit. Here's why, and here's how I think I can help you. Um, but yeah, definitely discussing, all right, what's your timing like? You know, am I gonna be able to meet that time frame and budget? <laughs> how much money do you have? Um, but also, you know, a lot of times clients don't wanna give you their budget, but you know, letting them know your ranges or fees, you know, in some way, so that you know you're on the same page and they're not thinking, it's $1,000 and you're thinking it's $5,000. And uh, where they are in the decision-making process, um, you know, they could just be starting or they could be like ready to go. And I think it's important to know that so that you can respond adequately and you know, take the time you need with them. If they're ready to go and you really like this project and it feels like a good fit, uh, you, know, you might be more apt to really pursue it. And then, of course, paying attention to the red flags while you're on this call or even in person, uh, just to know, like, maybe this isn't going to work out. So these are some various ones. Uh, yeah, if they don't have a budget, it's like, well, why are we talking if you have no money to give me? <laughs> um, if they badmouth previous creatives or previous service providers that are what you do, you know, everybody's had bad experiences, and that's fine, and we're human, and... You know, if they want to talk about it, that's great. But if they do it in like a disrespectful way, you know, maybe the problem isn't the creative, it's the clients. So you just want to keep an eye on, ear out for that. You're having communication issues, you know, you're just not gelling well. They have trouble defining what they want. That can always lead to issues later. If they're in a rush, like I don't take on rush work. It just gives me anxiety and... It's no fun, uh, you know, you might love rush work and then so good, but if they're in a rush, might not be the best fit for me. Uh, if they talk about their personal lives a lot, you know, you might have to always hear that on the phone with them. You know, if this is a business thing we're into, you know, sell websites or whatever it is we're doing. Uh, we don't need to hear the drama in their lives. If they stand you up, that's like a big red flag. Like, look, we have this meeting on the, if you can't make it, that's fine, but let me know we'll reschedule or whatever, but you know, if they just don't show up, that's, that's no good. Uh, they want everything, that's never good. Uh, you wanna be able to rein them in into like manageable phases of a project. They're waiting for a check to clear. Uh, that's not necessarily bad, but you know, I don't necessarily wanna know about all your financial things. I wanna know that you're gonna be able to pay me, but I don't wanna hear excuses either. So, uh, and if they're too busy doing other things while they're talking to you, uh, you know, they're putting you on hold and there's just like lots going on, you know, that's probably might be an indicator of how the project's going to go and that might not be good either. So keep an eye out for this when you're vetting people um, and your own personal red flags too as to, you know, things you want to stay away from. Okay, so you've got your contract and you've talked to somebody. So the next part of this process, you know, show me the money. And I don't think any project is real until you've received money for it. So any new client, if they want me to start a project, they're gonna have to give me a deposit. Um, you know, uh, everybody's always excited, ready to go, let's get this started, we've got great ideas. But 
that's not going to happen. I'm not going to put you in my calendar and schedule out your project until you've given me some money for it. Um, um, I gave somebody a deposit once, you know, met them on the computer, and they really ripped me off. They ended up doing nothing. I mean, it was impossible to get my deposit back, of course. Mm. But did you have a contract how, with how them? Do you, how do you talk to people about leaving a deposit? I mean, what do you say to them? Like they're going to make a deposit. For your for service your, or? For your service, for our services. I mean, I say a, a deposit's important just because you want to schedule time in your calendar for their project, and you can't really do that, or I won't, unless I have a deposit. Um, it also, uh, you know, if you never took deposits, um, you, you might not ever know when people are ready to actually start on a project. Yeah, but how do you question that? I mean, how do you talk to them? What do you say? about a deposit. Uh -huh. I'm just very like forthright about it. Okay, so I break payments into thirds. I require a third up front. And once you pay that deposit and sign my contract, then that's when we can get the project scheduled and ready to start. Um, I also usually book a few months out. So I try to say, you know, the sooner you get me that deposit and contract, well, the sooner you're going to get, I'm going to be able to get to your project. So I think it's pretty commonplace. Um, in a service industry to have a deposit. Um, you know, because you don't want to give away your time and start working on stuff wi without that. Susan? So I, when I send <coughs> my estimate or proposal or whatever it is, when I send, I, I always say um, deposit required to initiate work on the project. Yeah. And when you allow them to pay online, like through Harvest or PayPal or Stripe or Fresh, whatever it is, usually it's pretty quick. Yeah. And they're anxious to get moving, and they know you're not going to even look at it until they pay up. And that credit card makes it pretty easy for them, and I found that that's been a lot faster to get people motivated than waiting on them to mail you a check yeah. and write the check, and they have to find a stamp and fill out. Just give them an online option to click approval. Yeah, I do. I give you're able to pay online, you know, credit card, or I will accept checks too, just because mm -hmm. some clients. Yeah have to do it that way. You That's fine. Have to trust again. Go well, out there. You yeah, trust I mean, I think that just goes towards, you know, your overall marketing strategy, too, and showing, you know, you have this buttoned up contract and process that you're a professional that, like, you, they can trust you with their money. You're not just going to run away. <laughs> um, but packaging it up, so uh, I guess that could be a talk all on its own, is whether your uh, website prices are on your, your project prices are on your website and you know do you offer any packages too because uh, when we talk about money with clients if you if they've seen what they can expect it can be a lot easier of a conversation um, so I have website uh, packages on my website and I have my starting fees for those so when I'm having a conversation or a client or consultation call I can say hey have you been on my services page have you seen my prices um, so it can be a good way to get that money conversation started with knowing that they have an idea. Um, and then you definitely want to use accounting software. Uh, like Sue said, there's all kinds of ones. I love FreshBooks. I've been a customer of theirs since 2008. They are awesome. Um, you know, they're not the only ones. Like Harvest, QuickBooks, um, 17 Hats. Uh, yeah, so all, all kinds of different ones. The only thing I say about any accounting software you use is I think it should allow you to make one email to the client that you can customize. So I, once I talk to a client, I want them to get just one email from me with everything they need to get started. I don't want there to be a lot of back and forth and different emails from here and let me find the contract here and find this estimate over here. Like just one place, one thing they can reference all there for them. Um, so the email that I send out with FreshBooks, you know, they have a, when I send out an estimate or invoice, they have a place where you can put in your text. So I have this like boilerplate text that I copy on in there. Um, I usually send this out right after the consultation call, like right after we get off the phone, just get it out of the way. Um, and I'm going to tell them right here, I want to work with you. 
I'm currently booking projects to start. Like right now, I'm booking projects for July. Um, I do have a questionnaire I use, so I throw that link in there. Um, I think that's a good way to get people started to think like what you're going to talk about uh, or what information you're going to need from them. And then I have my three steps. Like once these items are completed, well then we can get our kickoff section started. Um, so I want them to review and accept the estimate. In FreshBooks, you can like accept the estimate, like uh, click a button. Um, then I'll send them an invoice, so they need to pay that invoice, uh, and sign my contract. So there's that link back over to my uh, contract on HelloSign. Um, and then, you know, I look forward to working with them. So they get this email from me after every consultation call. And then, hopefully, you've gotten your contract, you've gotten your deposit, and now you have an official project, so yay. Um, so this is like an extra step here at the end. They've signed on the dotted line, but it's that way to kind of move that from, okay, now we're, we've been doing client onboarding and now we're actually gonna start off a project. Uh, so I also have a kickoff call. Uh, again, I like to talk to people on the phone or if they were uh, in person, you could do it that way too. Um, and then now is where we really get into the nitty gritty of the project and start discussing what we're gonna do. Uh, so using a project questionnaire can be great as the scope of work. That's the questionnaire that I placed in that email that I sent with my estimates. And now finally you can get to work after all of that. And that's it. So that's the process. Fairly easy and straightforward. And then of course here's links to the slides and all these fun stuff you can get from me. Now we can talk about what happens next. <laughs> that could be like another presentation. Like, yeah. oh,